All right, cool. well, welcome to a podcast of an unspecific number. I'm Aaron, and that's Harvey. Hello. And we're going to be talking about everything from the real to the not so real today. Um, starting and ending <laughs> with current affairs. First current affairs is the apparently so I was informed, but moments ago the pirate bay is no more. Oh, very so, important news. Consider this a yes. candlelit vigil for a very valuable contributor to the site. <laughs> well, do you want to do you want to chat about bloody piracy overall? Yeah, well, I mean, as you, How England as you may or may not know, <laughs> by both our accents and if you, you follow our general life story, is that we are British, so we live in a fascist state when it comes to oh. torrenting. Uh, for the past four years, David Cameron has been ruthlessly cutting down on our rights to do anything that involves a megabyte. Pornography, um, don't like that either. Yeah, it recently has banned everything but the most vanilla, heterosexual, white pornography going. But in all um, fairness, who watches British porn anyway? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean <laughs> we're presumably the target audience, and we find yeah. it cringeworthy. Yeah. So I can only imagine how bad the rest of the world finds it. I mean, that would be interesting. I'd like to know how people yeah. <laughs> genuinely Although, view. although I, I can't stand British pornography. Well, I don't... I, I don't, don't like British people, I don't I like, so. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> the accent, but I imagine, like, you know, we seals like, oh, put it up me, put your cock up me ass. Like, to an American, it might be like, oh, she's exotic. No <laughs> way, is that exotic? There's no, no, nothing, nothing in the world could make that yeah. exotic. I don't know. I, you, you'd be surprised, I think. But um, well, there's uh, well, there's that. I mean, yeah. Then there's the older uh, internet service providers. They've been blocking. Uh, they've been blocking, the, including Pirate Bay. They've been blocking. They um, have, and, and also um, the streaming sites. Uh, I mean, Britain. the streaming sites. I mean, although it seems a bit dodgy that your internet service provider can block it, I understand the streaming sites. But the Pirate Bay is a very interesting one, which. I've never fully understood how you can, you know... It's a middle one. It's, a prevent it's preventative, I guess, is the legal definition it would be. It's how you yeah. can block the Pirate Bay. It's bullshit, though. And I mean, like I told you, as far as I'm aware, then these laws... these The this, the, I, the um, internet service providers blocking torrent sites is being repealed and the laws are being watered down. So they can only, like, tell you to stop it, but they can't enforce it. That's fine. Um, but but yeah, the thing, the thing about the Pirate Bay is that the people that, like, obviously made it, had they yeah. just, like, had a system like YouTube where they sort of any any torrent that sounded like, oh, you know, we're about to be sharing some, you know, some, you know, parts of the Caribbean 3, mm. I don't know. If, they, if they'd have had some sort of system to block those, then, you know, I mean, because the Pirate Bay, obviously, for, for people that don't really understand what, what torrents are... The Pirate Bay isn't hosting any files. It's literally just the Pirate Bay, is sort of like the post office of of the internet world. You have a have a file. Several people have a file, and then you. <laughs> I love the way I said for people who don't understand how torrents work, and I started explaining it in the worst way possible. That's a good start. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you continue on with you. You've, you've made your bed. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Anyway, so the Pirate Bay isn't actually hosting any any actual stuff it's several people sharing sharing parts of a file with each other yeah. so the pirate bay you know it's in, in a streaming on a streaming website obviously you can take it down because they are literally hosting the copyrighted material but the pirate bay doesn't do that so firstly it's quite harsh or very strange that it would even be approached anyway like the idea would be to you know more sort of it's because the scale of it was so large really exactly That's like yeah you, made the, you, um... you can't do the individual but I mean, it, but it's it like... was yeah we're gone well, I mean, like I was about to say, it's like the the dark web as well, as it's referred to yeah. er errorously, in my opinion, mm. is being raided by British police at the moment as well. And it's like that. I mean, both of these things started out as something to be used between a group of people for anonymity or yeah. in Torrenting's idea to transfer large work files quickly. Um, however, obviously, both of them have a propensity to being used legally um, well, or what, what is currently deemed legally. Obviously, your stance on copyright law, yeah. it, you know. Well, there's nothing. But, there's nothing inherently illegal about the the dark web. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go. What, what would you um, No, the dark web is a. I mean, unfortunately, it's a trendy buzzword that will yeah. convey what we're trying to discuss, so we can use it. Well, I mean, it's a bias anyway, isn't it? Like you've called it the dark web. Yeah, it's already it, evil, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, to be fair, some parts of the dark web are bad. I mean, you've got child pornography, you've got drugs, etc. Um, obviously, some of it isn't. Some but, of it. Is, I mean, I use fucking Tor. 
Can I say that? I've already not going to say. I do not use Tor. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, they know who if you I are was now. If I was to theoretically <laughs> use Tor, yeah. I might use it to look at the torrent sites that have been blocked by my internet service provider. Well, I mean, sort of. I mean, you know, in the same way that people say guns aren't bad, they're just a tool. Yeah. And they can be used irresponsibly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, in the same way that that's really that's really all it is. They're, I mean, a, stri- a, a, a website like you know, sort of what Prime Wire or something, is clearly just breaking the law. But mm. I mean, there's there's nothing inherently wrong with the pirate bay. Basically, I, it, maybe if they'd have had a bigger, better filter system, then it could have still been around. But the problem is the people who make the laws. I think they were they also just very antagonistic as well to the law. <laughs> like, do you remember when they yeah. when they filmed the police breaking in and stuff? Also, like um, oh, well, back in the very early days, like I must have, we must have been both back in like sixth form or whatever college. Um, okay. like the the police broke in back when the legality behind, or back when like the laws weren't fully developed in this whole stuff. Like we're talking like two thousand eight yeah. or something, and they like filmed them uh, because they knew nothing was in the place where they all were. But they, the police thought the servers were there, oh, okay. and they were like called them dicks or whatever. And I mean, oh, well, there we go then. So I think I think the pirate. I think I think one of the reasons they were focused so much is because they came the most. They became the most notorious by far. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's also it's people. I mean, obviously, when people hear the dark web, they go, oh, "What's on it?" And they go, oh, "It's full of child porn, isn't it?" And they go, "Oh, bloody hell, bet ban that." Like I think people who are making laws about this aren't fully understanding how the technology works. No. Yeah, it's. it's I mean, I'm pretty odd. sure I, I might be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure Tor and other other dark web browser provider stuff. It was all made by like law enforcement as it was. Mm. So <laughs> make talk about making your own problem. Uh, but I mean, yeah, like you said, it's a tool on how you use it. I mean, I think there's nothing inherently wrong with protecting your going an extra step to protect your anonymity on the internet. But obviously, some people will use that poorly. Yeah. But you've got to. I guess you've got to, if you want freedom, you've got to take the you know the bad people, right? Terrorists in it. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean it, is, it, is a, it is a you know is the internet version of kind of the terrorists of one I guess. <laughs> well, I still like that even when people don't have an anonymity, like uh, even on Facebook, the Facebook messages. Yeah, them, true. Anonymity yeah. Is, uh, is definitely not the only thing preventing people from being a dickhead. Like Facebook people on Facebook are more than willing to be dickheads. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they they won't just won't share out people's messaging information, and sometimes don't even notice it when somebody says, "Oh, let's go." Stab a bloke in the army over Facebook chat. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I, I often send texts to people about yeah. like wishing death to the West, and I like send texts to people yeah. about you know like like oh we we you know the the yeah. raid begins at seven on yeah. such and such street. Like I piss around quite a lot, so I don't like the idea of Facebook or like Vodafone taking seriously the stuff I send. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't know, yeah. I mean, obviously, I, don't know, I, I get. I, I, it's probably pretty hard to d- differentiate between what's like blind fantasy. Well, you'd show up on all kinds of. They'd be like, "Oh, he's talking about terrorism." Oh, bloody hell! It's on the tour network. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, yeah, I, 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 I guess he's got I'm a like, mustache. He's got a mustache. He must, <laughs> he must be evil. <laughs> they like get my picture yeah. up, and it's just like like yeah. the, 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 like a hideous mustache as well. It's like this man's got nothing to live for. Unless they see you, they're like sick and twisted bastard we've ever f- we've ever they ever see you with them. Th- they see all these things. They're like, oh no, shit, he might be a terrorist. They see you with your mustache, and like he's not, he's not doing anything. <laughs> like they they don't they don't buy it. Like they call you bluff. Like, like, he's not ideologically driven at all. Exactly. <laughs> 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 see, so really, it's a positive. Uh, but um. But yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of it's 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 just I mean the pirate bay being taken off, just I guess, I guess the antagonism of of the owners could be possibly a reason. But it's it's just it's very it's very strange to see this sort of like just people not really understanding. And and the thing is, and in fact, it's all for I I understand it's thieving, but it's you know it, all, all the copyright that we're usually talking about is like films that make hundreds of millions of pounds. Yeah, it's it's funny that it's sort of a crusade on their behalf because like no one's really no one's sharing porn over the pirate bay or anything. This isn't even like really a social issue. It's oh, I hope Warner Brothers <laughs> don't lose yeah. a couple of million. It's quite well. I mean, really, really, I mean, what this is uh, indicative of is that the crime only matters when it harms capitalism, right? So I mean, yeah. Well, I, yeah. Well, well, I mean, because the... that's what all these laws have been invented for and stuff. Like, and this is the reason yeah. like the pirate bay founders are getting ridiculous sentences and ridiculous fines. Is it because they fist off the capitalist overlords? How much would it be? Would it be in the billions? Um, I think it was millions of krona. 
So, oh. which could be up to millions of pounds, or millions, well, or it could well, just be hundreds of thousands of pounds. We all know that Krona is just made up fairy tale money, so it's True. literally worth nothing. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's got... I mean, Sweet Bear Sweden's barely a country, so it's probably all fine, right? Did you hear? That Actually, the guy from Mega Sweet me right now, asking to come into the place we're recording this. I keep telling him no. <laughs> Did you see the Mega Upload guy? Uh, is bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. He's had to fight like fifty lawsuits. I'm not surprised. When that, I think about how depressing it must be to watch your money drain on legal fees, I know. But um, yeah, um, onto onto more capitalist overlords being harmed by okay. the plucky internet. Uh, the Sony has been hacked um, in quite the, dramatic the fashion. Hmm? The, you said the Sony. Oh, did I say the Sony? Yeah. It's the Sony. The Sony <laughs> like Corporation. Is that about. right? Yeah, Sony. Sony Inc. Sony Corp. Um, yeah. So, uh, multimedia giants. I think they used to do electronics. Now do they just seem to make bad movies? Um, they do. They do everything. Well, they don't make TVs and they don't make laptops anymore. No, oh, they did. They. I thought their TVs was how they started, though. I oh, know, but but Sony TVs are ridiculously overpriced. Huh. And only well, there you I, go. I, I you're a Sony, Sony fanboy to the last. Yeah, you didn't question the. F uh, well, that's in the same way, like saying, "Oh, I thought Nintendo used to make b baseball cards." Trading card like, games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get, but I mean, <laughs> things move on. Though, though, like, when was the last time you saw someone using a baseball card? I've seen quite a lot of people using the TV recently. That's a good point. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> do, do you do you know anyone with a Sony TV? I don't look at what make people's TV. <laughs> that is, that is I don't question. know what make my TV is, and that it's like part. literally to the left of me. <laughs> well, they're about 600 quid for like something Let's quite standard. My TV is a Hitachi. There you go. There's the taste of a classless man, I imagine. <laughs> but, um, um, but yeah, but, so some interesting stuff has been hacked out. Uh, oh. The two most interesting points, I guess, are... Andrew Garfield may not be like they're desperately trying to work out what to do with Spider Man and Andrew Garfield might not be Spider Man anymore. That's number one. Why why is he getting fired from it? Because if he joins if they link up with the Marvel universe, then apparently Marvel don't want Andrew Garfield involved. Which I think is quite mean to mention him by name. I think he's, he's been absolutely fine. I don't yeah, I don't think, I think it's fine. He'll hold it back. Maybe it's just, maybe it's because they don't want the Spider Man Amazing Spider Man one and two to be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So maybe they ah. think it Also they're gonna tarnished. do another reboot. Yeah, the third reboot in, what's that, 10 years? <laughs> yeah. Almost, maybe 15. Jesus Christ. Oh, the, well, uh, thing, yeah, the whole, whole thing's uh, a mess, really. Well, the thing, the thing, look, so, who who actually did the hack? Because it's obviously not North Korea. I loved when North Korea diplomat was asked, I can't remember his name, when a North Korean dip, diplomat was asked, he said, oh, wait and see. And then it just turned out that they hadn't done it, but they were like, yeah, we're glad someone did. It's like, stop trying to be cheeky, like you're in, in control. Like, no one oh, yeah. believes that you could have pulled off that hack. Because wasn't it, the like, the biggest that, that... hack in... Well, not hack. Wasn't it, like, the biggest um, theft of information yeah. in, ever, or something? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's the biggest corporate one, at least. I'm yeah. pretty sure. There have probably been bigger ones on the American government, mm. like the Chinese, that we don't know about. But, um, yeah, it's the biggest public fallout one. It wasn't just credit card numbers or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty huge stuff, really. I mean, the, obviously, the, the the only way it really affects us is because Sony is obviously a multimedia giant. Then we get to hear about films and games and stuff. <laughs> but I'm sure, in actuality, if it was the Chinese, or if it, well, I mean, uh, or even if it was just like kind of like a group, you know, a private group of hackers or whatever, then it yeah. it represents a pretty significant breach in security. Because I can't imagine the guys at Sony were, uh, you know, were, were were not shelling out for state of the art protection. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, the thing, the weird, because this doesn't have anything to do with with the North Korean film. Then I'm assuming this is not just, at all. just a happy well, yeah. well, presume unless North Korea are playing a double bluff in the saying, "Oh, it turns out we <laughs> yeah. didn't do it, but we actually did." Then uh, presumably it's just a happy coincidence. The, this, the but, funny thing I, I read about because Seth Rogen was saying that he was annoyed because he, he's been asked to do cuts on the movie, the interview. Which for anyone who doesn't know, yeah. So to explain the story, um, there's a film called The Interview coming out starring Seth Rogen and James Franco in which they go and kill Kim Jong Il. Un. Um, un, fuck me. And uh, yeah, so they go, they go and they go and kill him. And North Korea has been annoyed at this. They said it's an act of terrorism. And then Sony got hacked during that period, so it was assumed that they were connected. But um, what what what's quite funny about the the North Korean um angle is um Seth Rogen was saying that the president of Sony has started asking for cuts. And so they've been having like very, you know, there's very minor chats where it's like, I'll oh, remove this second of footage 
and they'll be like no and the other person will say yes but the president of sony says that he wants to do it because he doesn't want to harm their relationship with north korea although i find it strange that he's saying that now having made the film about killing the president of north korea i don't think one or two seconds here and there is going to um yeah fully I... repair the damage Exactly. I mean, unless it's like a really pivotal one or two seconds where he dies. And it's it's the bit where he gets his head blown off. Yeah. <laughs> Is it actually? Yeah. Oh. But but it's just this sort of, I mean, like, make decisions. But think, yeah. think before you do things. And don't, don't I guess maybe, pull out, it's, maybe he's trying to offer a consolatory hand. It's like, we do care what you think, but not yeah. enough to not portray your country as terrible. Or not release the movie. We're going to yeah. release it. We spent money on it. I mean, I'd be kind of flattered if um, Seth Rogen made a film about me. Oh, maybe not Seth Rogen. I'm not, I'm not a massive fan. But, you know, that kind of group. Uh, if they made a film about me getting know. killed, I'd be like, yeah, that's kind of funny. For all we know, like, you know, sort of, the, the we, don't, we don't know how the sort of the government's holding up over there. Maybe everything's falling down. Maybe there's about to be riots in the street. So he's the, last like, thing, we, the last thing they need is Seth Rogen yeah, taking the piss. Yeah, we, we must block this movie that none <laughs> like of us... Kim is Jong-un's just really depressed, and he like like turns on the TV, it's just, yeah. it's just about him getting like kicked in the bollocks or whatever. It's like, oh, <laughs> didn't yeah. need this. <laughs> um, so, was there anything else that happened at Sony? Or? Uh, the only other thing is, obviously, Bond, the Bond script was leaked. Um, sure. Neither of us have bothered to read it, because it's probably largely inconsequential. Cause yeah, well, it's going to be Bond these things be? saying, oh, One shake and not stirred, and then he has a fight. Yeah, um, I mean, and Christoph Waltz is in it, and I imagine I'm probably not going to read it just because I actually quite like Christoph Waltz and would like to yeah. keep his role remain a secret. But as you, as you said earlier, it's a first draft, so how much yeah. of this is really going to stay is anyone's guess. But what what would you even what would you really be reading in that script? Like it would be like Bond jumps on train, he runs around, and then and then what? Like Bond asks for a martini, shake and not stirred. And then he yeah. sleeps with a hot woman, and then he somebody asks what his name was, and he goes Bond, James Bond. Like, and he travels <laughs> somewhere else. It, it's not of all the script leaks ever. It's not. It's not the most harrowing script loss ever. Like, if it was a Chris Nolan film, maybe you'd be like, oh shit, we're gonna find out this. Well, obviously. Or if it's a Quentin Tarantino film, he might just stop making the project altogether and uh, then re-announce well, it six months later. Well, of course. Yeah, he. <laughs> it, I I haven't read the Hateful Eight. He was like, oh, you know, people have re- people have read it. I'm not making it now. I'm going to do a live read so even more people can see what the script is, and I'm going to make it anyway. Either. No, of course like not. <laughs> but it's like you just you stop. I don't I don't understand what your point is. Like, he's self-important, isn't he? <sighs> yeah, I, Quentin Tarantino doesn't seem as chilled out as he once was. <laughs> I think they, I think I think being because I mean I guess when he was making Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction and still relatively un like not un, un, un famous obscure yeah um he had nothing to prove or you know he felt you know what I mean he had something to prove and yeah. so now he's gone I don't know you know what I mean he's like fucking I think he's gone to his head slightly he well he's one he's, of, he's one of those directors who he's a lot like um you know you know Paul Thomas Anderson Peter yep. Anderson. Yeah, have you noticed like the the style of movie has changed? Like they've gone from like these sort of quite small little projects. I mean, I mean, Paul Thomas Anderson's never been small, but like sort of he'd he'd have sort of focus it, projects. Yeah, uh, yeah. It would. I mean, now they're sort of they're quite these grand scale, like yeah. sort of, and the cinematography's perfect, and it's sort of. Uh, and Chris Nolan's sort of the same. Like obviously, you know, he did Memento, and then he did like insomnia and stuff and now everything he does has to be big it's like yeah. everything's got to feel grand like very cinematic and i think like yeah quinton's definitely gone that way yeah so it's pretty so. and i wonder why because we're never gonna that... get something as kind of like again focused or as um like you know just incredible as reservoir dogs i think it was a, yeah. something that only a new filmmaker could make <laughs> yeah I, I, it, it seems very um just sad i, I guess. guess yeah right yeah but yeah. Um, so, but, it, but at least well, at least he's being big-headed and he's still making things that are obviously of high quality. Sure. It's not like Michael Bay getting big-headed. No. It's like oh, you made. Though I mean, we both TMNT. enjoyed. We both enjoyed Pain and Gain. Uh, I, yeah, no, I did enjoy it. Yeah. I don't like it afterwards. Now Fuck that I know what it's see. based on. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Geez, it it, barely... It's a bit odd. But yeah, so from unintentional leaks to intentional leaks, we have J.J. Mm. Abrams continuing to tease out parts of his script and us continuing to fall for it by talking about him. Yeah. Um, the Star Wars trailer came out, as I'm sure everyone knows, a while ago. I wrote an article on it. Um, and then we've got the names of the characters now who have been put out to the world. Oh, give me some of them, because I haven't heard them. Have you not? Okay, no. so 
you know, the, so the the the, droid, the ball droid, which by the way is not CGI apparently. Apparently, that is a working remote control robot that rolls around the sand. That's um, very cool. So, like, uh, the new R two D two is called BB eight. Good. Um, mm. Oscar Isaac's X wing pilot is called Poe Dameron. Mm hmm. Um, the lightsaber Sith is called Kylo Ren, which is very kind of Asian again. Might be getting a repeat of the Trade Federation <laughs> <laughs> and the Yellow Menace in space. <laughs> um, and then the two interesting ones, the, the two more interesting ones, in my opinion, is the girl on the speeder bike. Yeah. She's called Ray. Um, okay. And the stormtrooper is um, guy is called Finn. And I think okay. these two are interesting in the sense that their second names aren't given, which probably means they're descended from someone. Yes, no, important. that makes sense. I still like you know think think back to the first, think back to the fourth movie. Like what what was the main character's name? Luke. Luke. Like they're definitely trying to make it sound more alien, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Ray, <laughs> Ray, and Finn. It's yeah. very strange. Han, Finn, Han Solo. A... He was just a German man. He was the space German equivalent. Yeah. <laughs> And then you had a layer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who wh wh that was just a that was just an instruction about what to do with her, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I I've been trying to put this together, and I don't think I mean it, I think Ray Skywalker sounds better than Ray Solo, but I bet you she's Ray Solo. Yeah, <laughs> of course, of course she's gonna be. And maybe I don't know who the stormtrooper guy is gonna be, but you know Carrie Fisher, Leia hasn't been faithful. <laughs> That's the case. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was thinking he might be yeah. Finn Calrissian. I was. Uh, oh shit! That'd be quite I, cool. I, I think. I mean, because I mean, I, I'm not. I mean, of, of course, of course, it could be. I mean, it'd be quite funny if he was Finn Skywalker. Yeah, like... <laughs> that would amuse me. But uh, there's, there's certain things holding it back. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know where Poe Dameron comes into it. I'm not sure why the X-wing pilot's important. Presumably, he's like the new Wedge Antilles, I guess. Yeah. I mean, or the new Han Solo. Maybe he's even like the, this generation's kind of Han Solo or whatever. I I really like the way that like, like because J.J. Abrams, obviously like most most directors, like you know they keep the script secret. They keep everything really secret, obviously to build hype yeah. and excitement. But I don't think that he ever has deserved that. And even though you know J.J. tries to keep his script secret, you know what they're going to be. Like yep. you're gonna have two wise crack and street wise characters. Maybe one's a bit smarter than the other, and like maybe they'll have a, a conversation about God or logic or life, and then they're gonna meet a bad guy, yep. and then they're just gonna fight for an hour. Like he, I don't think he really he tries to keep everything secret, but it's Star Wars. Like it's not gonna have a complicated. Plot. I mean, the most well, complicated. Well, it's gonna be like. I mean, his his twist in yeah. Into Darkness was literally just a character was called something yeah. else, and people already guessed it. And so he I lied. Yeah, and he lied. <laughs> that was the best of it. Yeah. So I and imagine th this will be the case in this one. Just the characters will either like either if it's not revealed at the very beginning, it will be revealed somewhere in the middle, or maybe in the first, maybe in the next second movie yeah. that someone isn't called something that they aren't or whatever. Mm -hmm. Probably in the second one because we'll probably want to remember what they did in Empire, I guess. Yeah. Well, his 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 continuing theme is just that he hides his scripts because people's imaginations of what the script could be is always more interesting than his own so we like i mean do you remember when when they were making lost and he was asked a question like oh will the island be a dream and he was like no 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 we've you know we've come up with a really good idea and then you get to the final episode of lost it's like what what were you keeping secret this is terrible like, <laughs> i mean like you know a any any idea any notion of what could be an interesting star trek movie or an interesting star wars movie or an interesting Lost episode, whatever you imagine it could be, J.J. Abrams' one will be more boring. So yeah. the, uh, it's not like, you know, when, when you know the, the script of Inception's kept secret, and it's like, oh, I genuinely don't know how that movie would might go. <laughs> he, he hasn't really, he hasn't earned his right. He doesn't to, have the, yeah, I agree, he's not the yeah. intellectual powerhouse that he thinks yeah. he is. He's quite generic. Yeah. But he's just got a lot of money. I mean, like, I mean, like I said, like I said, um, Earlier, I think he's just a very good businessman. And I think the mm. secrecy thing, if anything, is probably for that purpose. Like, he might lie to himself and it says to protect his vision. But it's definitely to just put fucking bums on seats, as they say. Yeah, of course. So, uh, but you excited about the new Star Wars? Yeah, I'll go watch it. I think <laughs> it looks alright. I think, I, I, like, I like the fact, I, one of my favourite things about the Star Wars, Star Wars as a kid was the, the model effects. And I like the fact that they're bringing back the models. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think it'll be, I, I'll... 
As 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 Mr. Abrams has predicted, I will watch it and keep him employed for a little longer. No, of course. I I might even start watching Star Trek now that he's not involved. Yeah, I mean, if uh, Jonathan Fra if Jonathan Frakes takes it over, I'll be all over that. That's good. I'll be like Thunderbirds again. <laughs> God. There's something Smooth. major going down on Enterprise D. Let's move it on for poor Frakes' sake. <laughs> 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 okay. So, what else is that? We've got oh, Pixar yeah. now. Um, new okay. Pixar trailer is out. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to the Monsters University trailer, I think it's uh, really. I think it's, I think it looks really promising. It's called Inside Out. It's based on. Um, well, the concept is that it, the inside the human head there are five core emotions. Yeah. I can't. I remember one of them's greed and one of them's love. I don't remember what the other three are. I think one of them might be like fear. Um, uh, one of them might be loneliness, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so the and the five emotions are in uh, present in every character's head. It looks like kind of like as we because I remember we did one podcast on this when it just, the concept had just been announced, and yeah. it's like a British comic strip called The Numbskulls that was in the Beano, um, and it appears that every human has their own set of these five numbskulls, um, and uh, yeah, the trailer is very good. I think it uh, it plays on gender tropes. There's lots of parent humor. There's a bit of kid humor. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. What did you think of it? Um, no, it avoided the, uh, it avoided the whole everyone's, I mean, obviously the angry character's angry, but it avoided it, what it could have been a lot better than yeah. I, I was imagining. I thought it would be really annoying, like, wow, well, five characters, they're, they're going to react in one way. <laughs> That'll be fun. No, but I thought it was good. I also like the difference between, like, because the main, you don't really see much of the girls' character, like, the, the main girl and the yeah. main characters of it, you don't really see much. You see more of the parents two sets of emotions yeah and you see quite a distinct difference between how the mum's head is run and how the woman's head is run and how the yeah. dad's head is run like the i think it's anger guy is the main the main boss yeah. in the dad's head which i thought was re a really nice touch well what, he, like, what a, i, did, I didn't realize they'd also do a lot of the um they, they'd have the people like sh showing outside the people i thought it was all going to be inside the head one person's head no, it seems but, to be inside everyone's head. Yeah, no, they've expanded it a lot more than I imagined. Like, obviously. Which is good, but I think it's a lot of work, actually. I think it's going to be quite... Because if you notice, the designs were different as well. Like, the, all the... all the oh, It's quite funny. All the fear, all the um, emotions in the dad's head had little mustaches. Uh, <laughs> and all the women's ones were um, designed separately as well. And yeah. So I think that's a lot of... Unless it's just the three of their emotions, then I think it's going to be a lot of work for them to do. Okay. If the girl interacts with different people. Well, I think I think it looks quite well thought out. I'm pretty well, happy. Looks, looks better than Cars 2. Okay. Looks better than Monsters University. <laughs> <laughs> what was wrong with Monsters <clears throat> University? I don't know. I just really didn't like it. Maybe it's because I was at university at the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was like really... You were jealous. Lacking. Were you not jealous? getting I was jealous I was having such a fun <laughs> time. <laughs> as the, what, what, yeah. Those wacky monsters. Where of course I was watching it and I was like, this is like my life. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you like fucking... <laughs> Put me in a locker, okay. drove off in a car. But um, but no, yeah, I I, I want I want a I want another good Pixar comedy. I I didn't mm. I didn't particularly find Toy Story three like that funny. Uh, Brave that was obviously not meant to be funny overly, wasn't it? There was like most of it was just like a sad parody of a prison movie. I thought the whole thing was supposed to be funny. Really? Yeah. Like oh. what? Well, like it's 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 basically like The Great Escape. But Brave? No, Toy Story three. Oh, sorry. Oh no, no, yeah, no. I don't mind about Brave not being funny. I was gonna say you said the word Brave, right? I didn't imagine <laughs> oh no, that. no, no. I was moving. I was gonna say something after. You so you move forward and then back again. That's I did. I did. Amazing. Um. No, yeah. To, I mean, I thought Toy Story 3 was alrightly funny at points, but no, yeah, it would could have been funnier. Mm. I think they would. They were. I mean, they were put. They were trying to make it. They, you know, they were heading up for that money shot where you were kind of supposed to cry and stuff. So I guess they couldn't keep it too funny. Plus, I kind of I want new IPs. Like you know, I've seen Brave was a nice little ad addition, but you know, it still wasn't very original. No, so, it well, like, I mean, it's Disney Princess, solid. wasn't it, really? I mean, Christ, what have we had? We had Toy Story 3, Cars 2, and Monsters University. Like, I want... With I Incredibles want... 2 announced coming out. And, and Finding Dory. Finding it's Dory. Like, I, I, want, I want a new thing, and finally, this will be a new thing that I haven't seen before, except yeah. in the Beano, when I used to and play it. <laughs> most of the world hasn't seen the Beano, thankfully. Of course. So. What's wrong with the Beano? Got I'm not a fan. I, I, I was given one age 12 for the first time, and I was like, yeah. what the fuck is this? In all fairness, by that point, I'd been going for about 70 years. You, and you, you it imagine, was tired. Like, you know, 
Friends, friends could barely yeah, the manage. If a dog 10 had been seasons. going for seventy years, you'd put it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! But um, what 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 else? What else you got? Oh uh, well, speaking of good old England, we've oh. got uh, the next Assassin's Creed is visiting this our shore, and uh, hopefully there'll be no Beano's there. You're getting very good at these segues. Oh, I thought that was good. Yeah, you have to I'm, connect. Um, <laughs> I, I won't lie. I actually wrote the list uh, to be to be to, to link onto each other. I'm not. This is, uh, this is how all conversation should happen. Giving I'm, out my secrets. I yeah, have run out of things to talk about in this. It's because I'm a bartender now. Everything's effortless. It's all just uh, <laughs> just brought on from topic to topic to topic. <laughs> Moving on from the wife that yeah. left you. How's your depressed daughter? <laughs> Moving on from that wine you've been drinking. How was your trip to Italy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Um, Victorian London is going to be the setting of the not next, but one after Assassin's Creed game, I guess. Um, after Rogue. Um, oh no, Rogue's come out. What? Oh, Jesus. Rogue, right. Rogue's a PS3, Xbox 360 game. Oh. This, this okay, was so like, the next this was so to the satisfy n- the plebs that like I don't mean plebs. <laughs> plebs. What, what the Ubisoft, poor people. What Ubisoft would consider plebs who don't move people. on? Because obviously I didn't run out and buy a PS4 immediately. Like why the fuck should I? It's too expensive. Wait, thought you have one. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you you think too highly of me, Aaron? Sorry, I thought yeah. Sorry, I thought I assumed you bought every console as no. it came out. No, mate. <laughs> um, I don't have that much money. So there we go. Um, so um, yeah. Um, London next next Assassin's Creed game apparently. Um, it's called Victorious or Victory, I think. Oh yeah, it's, no, it's, it's like a pun on the fact it's in Victorian England, well, which I wasn't too sure about because yeah. the rest of them haven't been puns. <laughs> apparently, um. Well, I, I, I know that they're dropping all the future stuff in this one. Really? Entirely? Completely. And, wow. Um, that's what's been said. And apparently from from the trailer that has been seen by some of the people at Kotaku, where I get all of my news about everything from. Interesting. Um, <laughs> apparently it's... Uh, apparently the... Uh, <laughs> I can't even remember what the fuck they said now. That's how uninteresting it was. I don't think they've changed anything. So you think they've literally just dropped a component and continued onwards? Apparently, uh, apparently, like the the fighting's a lot more fluid now. There was like a jumping from horse cart to horse cart scenario, which we've already seen in Uncharted too. But yeah, you'll like you'll jump on a horse cart, you'll fight some people, and then you'll jump off. Apparently, it's a lot more. Well, then again, like I know I know they're saying oh the controls are more fluid. They've always said that. And I haven't noticed a great deal of difference in the way Assassin's Creed played, other than they just remove a button and tie no, since, more than one thing to a button. Since Assassin's Creed 2, I couldn't... Oh, maybe actually in number 3 and 4, there was a slight change in fluidity. Like, the ability to run and kill was added. Yeah. But other than that, it feels it still feels stiff as all hell, I won't lie. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but yeah, I find it strange that, yeah, they just they started removing buttons. Like, in the old ones, you had to hold, like, high profile button and then your sprint button and then the yeah. later ones they were like I oh, miss now high profile now... button high profile I like high profile was an amazing button. idea it was a great idea it had like um well it was it was it was good because you didn't only move at two speeds you had three speeds and I think like that's the main issue with Assassin's Creed like if you're gonna tie one button to you know sort of traverse an entire city you can't just have yeah. two speeds. I can't because you needed an in, and it, even more now. Because like I mean, yeah. in like the first and second ones, like when you were moving around like um, the Middle East, etc. Yeah. Like there wasn't as much cool to be indoors. Like you're only really indoors in the fortress and like the hospital. Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas in like um, not free as much, but in like four and in I presumably Unity, it looks yeah. like very urban. Then you're gonna you need a walking button. You need a I need to traverse this room without running up the wall. Button. Yeah. Would, would would you like to walk as slow as possible or sprint? I mean, imagine. Yeah. If that just existed, sprint into in a wall life. every time, you and then it'd be so funny if you could just sprint into a wall and like just it's like like you're doing some video games where you like hit the wall and then you just go slide off to the door. That would yeah. be okay, but in Assassin's Creed because you can run up everything, he will hit the wall and run up it, and well, I don't, you don't you never want that. In in the old one, they had that. You would sprint, and whenever you came to an edge or something, you would trip on it, but you would stay back, yeah. and then when you were holding X, you would jump off. That that okay. was that was why uh, it was almost like it was well designed. I don't know. <laughs> it was incredible, really. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, like, I mean, it's, oh, it's going to be the same old shite, isn't it? I mean, if anything, they've they've really run out of ideas. Yeah. Like, well, now they're just. No, I mean, now they're just like trawling the forums and like because they know they've got they've got no ideas, so they're just like saying like, oh, here's all the cool stuff people wanted to us to do when the series was fresh. Yeah. Let's do it now. <laughs> like, did you have you play, how much of Black Flags have you played? Because there's a lot played, of pretty. Like, 15 hours? 
because if you go into the into the modern bit, you can read emails about people mm. talking about the you know because you're playing a fucking video game in Black Flags. Yeah. That's the idea of the future of it. And if you go into like the head office, you can read the emails, and they're like, "We've got loads of different places to choose from, like Japan, England. You know, we can literally keep making these games forever." That's and there's really even a funny. bit where it's like they say, "Oh, you know, we could we could set it in World War Two," and they were like, "Oh, we can't be bothered because you know, vehicles vehicles will be too hard." And it's really self-aware, and it's like I would That's almost find it funny, but when it's the seventh installment, and I know it's just being a cash cow now, it's it's less charming. Had it happened around Assassin's Creed Two. I'd be like, oh, they're just being a bit self-aware about what it could become. But I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure they'll step in. <laughs> well, they've, they've let it happen. Of course. What would you do if it turns out those emails are literally just genuine emails from around the office? <laughs> like, they were that low on, low on content? <laughs> like, Jesus. Dave, I, what's your inbox looking like? It wouldn't surprise me. I don't really know what's happened with Ubisoft. Ubisoft have used to have loads of original IPs, and now... Like they've got Far Cry and Assassin's Creed, <laughs> exactly, and and all the IPs they released, like even it was like Splinter Cell, Prince of Persia, and you know they had original and Assassin's Creed, and they had original IPs, and they all felt different. Now all their games feel the same, like Assassin's Creed and like even Splinter Cell basically played the same. They use the same engine, they have all the and same takedowns. Far Cry managed to feel exactly like Assassin's Creed as well. It's true, but at least it's in first person, so you sort of don't notice. And then, and then, you know, even they release Watch Dogs, and Watch Dogs plays just like Splinter Cell. It's like, what are you doing? What happened? What happened to the management at Ubisoft? Like, they worked I guess... out what made money and kept very vigorously to it. But it's just that thing, they were starting out, so they thought, oh, we best have loads of really interesting stuff. And now they're not starting out anymore, now they just make money. So they're like, oh, we can... bills to pay. Yeah, we, we, can stop, we can stop experimenting now. Just so odd. Just so strange. It's the way things change. What's up with Aaron? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> like like Assassin's Creed, especially. It's the way they change for the worst. Like I can understand if they were trying to innovate, but they're not even. Hmm. But um, yeah, very sad. I was hoping that the Victoria London thing might be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I was well, a I was, more depressed about Assassin's Creed. I was saying, <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, no, it's it's not a victory at all. No. But it's it's. I was telling, I was saying it to to my girlfriend the other day. I said. When Assassin's Creed came out, it was like probably the most interesting IP idea in a couple of years. Like, wow, you could—it's a gen genetic memory, and it's sort of, you know, you know, oh, the way yeah. it, the way it plays. I've never seen a game play like that, and it's so free roaming and open. And uh, it felt probably next gen, and now it's like in little under about six, seven years, they've turned what was a really interesting original idea into oh, that fucking thing's out again. Yeah. Like, how do you do that? It is impressive that they, because <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, they remember there being an awe of the first Assassin's Creed, and it wasn't even like, I mean, it was a good game, but it was definitely yeah. lacking. But just like in concept alone, it was so good and new that you yeah. were willing to put up with it. It was like, yeah, I will invest in this idea, and then they fit, and then they made it good, and it was like, oh great, I'm excited now. And then it was like, now we're gonna make one a year. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Because there's but, nothing yeah. preventing them from getting like four development teams and bringing out one every three months. I think they'd but... still sell. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that would be the most horrible thing they've ever done. Really? The thing that surprises me most is Rogue. Like, you didn't even know Rogue existed. I wrote, I, I, I forgot, I didn't, you had to tell me when Rogue existed, you now had to tell me that Rogue is even out. <laughs> like, yeah, it exactly. doesn't. you're supposed to be a fan. It, like, I've, it's just, it's not, it's, like, it doesn't, it hasn't shown up on anything I frequent. Yeah. Like, I mean, they're getting so cocky, they're not even advertising it anymore. Like, imagine, imagine being on that development team. There's no advertising budget. It must be so depressing. Mm. <laughs> like, okay, guys, you gotta make, you gotta like pay one Facebook page yeah. to advertise you. <laughs> you sell sad. millions. And the sad thing is that, like, you know, that game's even um, that game's like you, you, you're not playing as an assassin. You're playing as a Templar. Like, they're even trying to innovate in the most mild way possible, and they're not even <laughs> like, yeah. why wasn't that idea in the main game? I got no idea. No That's idea. ridiculous. Very I mean, strange. especially considering it sounds like Unity like apparently tries and fails to bring up the idea of the assassins not being that great. Yeah. Which well, is another thing. That, which is something that Free tried and failed at again. I guess. <sighs> I don't know, they all tried and failed. Yeah. Well, they they just don't go into the philosophy enough. They just make the Templars so evil that it's like, right. Well, I guess we've got to beat them, even if these yeah. are a bunch of assholes. <laughs> yeah. You know, these guys are the. Yeah. They're the most stupid cult going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't actually have a segue for this one. I guess speaking of stupid, we've got the console wars. Well, hey, um, what's going on with the console wars? Well, the battle, Xbox the console battle in November has just won its first victory. Yeah, in that it won Battlefield November. Um, 
it sold more than its PS4 brethren. Now the cynic, the cynics, and the PS, the Sony fanboys among uh, uh, among us might say that the only reason it did that is because there aren't many more PS4s to be sold. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I I don't think that anything. I I don't. Hit, I can't remember anything important coming out for the Xbox One recently. So I don't think it's a. Uh, you know, oh. it's not like it, and I don't remember any of the problems having been fixed. So it doesn't seem like it's a. This is a resurgence of the Xbox One. I I've no, I've no idea. I mean, it must just be parents just buying their kids for Christmas. Yeah, that must and be I it. guess. I mean, it's weird that X. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why anyone's buying them at the moment. I can't think of any games that are on them in particular. I, yeah, I was having this conversation with someone at work, and I was just like, I don't. They're like, oh, I don't have one of the new consoles yet. It's like because I wouldn't. I don't know what to play. Yeah. There's Destiny, and I don't want <laughs> to play Destiny. <laughs> some, some someone at work, they were a bit older, and they said, "What what what are the new consoles like? What?" What's good about them? And I went, oh, they're more powerful. And they went, yeah, but like, you, they always, there's always a new one, isn't there? Why, why, why do you buy them? And I, for a minute, I had trouble trying to explain to someone why the next gen was good. I, I think, I think that's a sign that I used to be excited about it, and I don't care anymore. Oh, and I, it's I not that anymore. I don't like games any less. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't defend why these new ones were. I mean, they didn't need to exist. That's the saddest thing about them. Yeah. And I think that's why they've struggled, though. I mean, the PS4 is starting to find its own niche. The Xbox One doesn't seem to be as much. Well, I guess they did need to expand because, you know, the PS3 and Xbox are a bit dated now. Like, mm. But it really is. It's just an upgrade. Like, I'm not seeing anything that's particularly innovative or interesting. But, I mean, at least on the last console, we got GTA 4, and it was like, wow. But I guess that's the rule of diminishing returns. That's what you're going to get. The only thing I'm enjoying now is that PC games are looking better. <laughs> yeah, they look much better. That's, that's, the, that's the only. I have to wait for another generation before PC games start looking better. It's like, oh, good. Now, now the the old consoles can start holding back how nice my PC games can look. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, sad but true. Yeah, yeah I mean, I I think the whole the whole contest is uh, you know, neither neither side's proving much. It's just which company can bankrupt themselves at least on the. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, there's the Wii U. Did the Wii U outsell anyone uh, in the last? I month? think the Wii U is having a real resurgence at the moment because of Smash Bros. Oh, okay, um, fair enough. But I don't. I mean, I don't know how major or minor it's going to turn out to be. I imagine that'll sell quite a lot of Christmas because you know people love Smash Bros. People love um, and like people. Obviously, the younger children people will remember the Wii quite fondly, won't they? So yeah, and it's the cheaper of the consoles. So. Oh, it's just it's. The 11 million people who want Smash Bros are going to buy it. Yeah, get your that'll kids be, a new console. <laughs> that'll be that. <laughs> and hey, maybe the Wii U will become the victor again. That exactly. would be the turnaround of the century. That would be so odd. Yeah. But, um, uh, what, I, yeah, not much to discuss. Do you fancy segways? <laughs> uh, no, this one's just another stupid one, actually. Um, J.K. Rowling. Um, right. Has, is on a Harry Potter binge at the moment, and I know you don't view Harry uh, Potter favorably. I but... actually like Harry Potter. What? I thought you didn't. No, I like Harry Potter. I just don't like the way people think it's so amazing. Okay. I just well, read the books and thought they were quite nice. She's releasing twelve. She's announced because as well as writing a short story about a month ago about Dolores Umbridge, yeah. she's releasing twelve new short stories on top of obviously the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them trilogy that she's looking overseeing. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it sounds, it feels like after like maybe five or six years of leaving Harry Potter alone, that she's uh, yeah. really broken down any about any res- reservations she had about <laughs> leaving that franchise alone. Oh god! Seems like she's back in there for good. I mean, yeah, she's sort of like Ricky Gervais bringing back David Brent and whoring him out. It's like, oh, yeah, go on and go back to the best thing you ever did. Yep, that's fine. I mean, have you noticed she's still releasing? She's still apparently releasing books under her like um, pseudonym. What, yeah. yeah, pseudonym. Why? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it he, made sense. The to pseudonym begin with. made sense for the first one, but then yeah. people know who you are now. So what's the point? I don't. No, I agree. It's very strange. But I mean, yeah. I guess maybe she doesn't. What she still wants to see how well they sell. Because I mean, I if I saw her pseudonyms uh, book in the store, I don't know what it is. Um, and I like to think I'm fairly up with book news. So I assume most people don't know what J.J. J.K. Rowling's. Um, I went to go say J.J. Abrams then. Uh, J.K. Rowling's pseudonym is. So maybe it's maybe she's in it for like the kind of economic, you know, sales alone kind of thing. Yeah. But no, I mean, I think 
I mean, the Dolores Umbridge story was all right. I don't think it was great. I don't think Dolores Umbridge is that good a character. Um, I I mean, I'm going to read the rest of them, obviously, because I mean, they're free. So, and I, oh, I like Harry Potter. Huh? They're going to be free. Well, the, the, well, I assume so. The Dolores Umbridge one was free. Oh, okay. Okay. She just releases them on Pottermore, so. <laughs> well, that's in my bookmarks. <laughs> I didn't even my know it was page. a thing. I would have gone on HarryPotter.com. Uh, Pottermore is the um because I don't know if you know what Pottermore is. It's like a kind of web browser based MMM MM O R P G MMM MMO R P G yeah yeah um, Pottermore 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 um and yeah it's um yeah she but it's like run it's not run by her but she's like very closely linked to it oh okay um and yeah she releases her stories on there I believe if I'm not wrong um but yeah like I said I mean I just don't. Unless she's just, I mean, I think this is the wrong way to do it. I think she should, she, she probably should just write like 50 of them and release a book. <laughs> yeah, once. exactly. Yeah. Like, just call it, you know, like, you know, okay, you can just do anything like the Wizarding World or whatever. Like, she says she's always wanted to expand it. Go for it. Just, well, I guess. I think it's so weird just writing a bunch now. of kind of half baked short stories. It's like she's writing Harry Potter fan fiction, but obviously she is the canon, so that's I mean, quite she, dangerous. She might, she might just be out of ideas at this point. Like, uh, no, I mean, I've, I, I mean, I'm not even sure if the, this current generation is reading Harry Potter, or are they too busy reading the Hunger Games? Well, that was that's pretty old. That's been out for a while. Oh, but of course they'd find it through the movies. Wait a second, sorry, I can't hear you. You can't hear me. Okay, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. <laughs> oh, wicked! I don't know. Um. Well, I don't. I don't even. Uh, it's, I mean, people are just watching the films now, aren't they? Yeah, or, presumably. Do, do you think I they've mean, had no, a resurgence yeah. of the game? It is sad that even with Harry Potter, readings becoming more and more unpopular. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have. If I'd been born now, I wouldn't have gone back to Harry Potter. The only reason I read it was because it was there. But then again, it's not really. It's not really made for me, was was it? Yeah, so. I mean, who? Is I mean, I guess, well, all we can all all the all the writing industry can hope for now is that the Kindle saves them, I guess, or the ebook revolution. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and we said we were going to end on reality, um, as we started on. Okay. So, to the most real of realities, religion. We've got Pope dogs. Yay! The Pope Francis the first, um, the Pope that it's cool to like. Yeah. Um, He's he a great guy. He's a nice guy. But sometimes. He says some silly things. Yeah, and sometimes he also continues to be quite anti-gay. But we look over that. Does he? Sometimes he's not quite so anti-gay. Oh, okay. Um, Do all gays go to heaven? Or is it just all dogs? Just all dogs. Oh, okay. Sorry, casually say what the title of what he said now, and that'll make sense. <laughs> no, no, all gays don't go. Gays, gays, gays only go to heaven if they believe in God. Oh, sure. But dogs, who aren't capable of believing in anything, get a free pass. Yeah. So, so the read is... into that what you will. <laughs> so the Pope has recently said that all dogs go to heaven. I guess in a way to make news, because you know when he says stuff like, "Oh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna start, you know, send, selling some of the, sending some of the wealth. We're gonna start doing more for charity. Um, I'm gonna start, you know, taking away the expenses from bishops." I'm like, "Oh, that's that's very interesting. That's it's you know got a nice Christy, good part of your Christian message, and it's uh you know and it sort of make, makes the whole system seem a bit less corrupt than it probably was and uh, and then he goes and says that all dogs go to heaven it's like oh like because uh, uh, obviously you know you and I would already think it was quite silly what he believes in anyway but yeah fundamentally all, all dogs go to heaven uh it's kind of it's it, it's just ki it's just kiddie christianity isn't it it's like it's what you'd tell a kid when its dog had died. Like, they, they, I, I, there can't be 40-year-old Christians going, oh, shit, I didn't know that. That's really interesting information. That doesn't mock yeah, what like I believe at all. Yeah, would like to hear some genuine Catholic reactions to that. Yeah. Like, would Sorry. they be annoyed that they've been sad for so long about their pets not going to heaven? Or yeah. would they be thankful... Because do because do you remember at one point they said that uh, oh all all toddlers don't go to heaven all uh, all unborn babies yeah that was a don't, big don't go to heaven they issue. go to purgatory and then and then and then they ran and we said oh actually that's not true it's like mm, kind of kind of don't believe you when did God change his mind on that I mean the last pope quit how do you quit the role of God, <laughs> God's God's voice on earth and yeah I mean I guess like, God spoke to him and said oh I'm not I'm not not feeling the relationship anymore mm. Sparks died. 
I mean, I. I mean, surely if the sparks died, you just kill him. Well, why is this one gotta? Yeah. I mean, maybe he put, maybe he was a good part. Maybe he put in some extra hours. Gets the last few years off. I just I've I've I just I find. I mean, it's I, really where I it all starts amazing. to fall apart. I think. Yeah. When you say something like dogs go to heaven, it's like, yeah. well, what about um, why dogs? <laughs> why? Yeah. <laughs> why iguanas? Because surely when you're when you're telling people these big ideas about how the universe works. You've got to sort of keep it just subtle enough. It's like, you know, when a cult leader sort of comes in one day and says, Oh, uh, Zlork has told me uh, we can only worship through giving me blowjobs. It's like, eh, I don't believe you. <laughs> or he says, Oh, we've got to kill. We, we've all got to kill ourselves. It's like, Oh, I don't. Uh, that's come out of nowhere. So the whole dog's got to heaven. I don't know. I, I think that because he's only doing more damage to the public perception of the religion. Because this, this isn't just something that some crazy said. He's, he's God's representative on Earth. It's just, it's such an odd thing to say. I don't know how anyone had a discussion about that and thought, that's a good thing to say. I mean, obviously, he was apparently having this discussion with God. And God, you know, thought it was a good thing to say. So well, I, mean, I, I God no was idea. like, I've been vague on the subject for a while now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, wait, actually, no, I wasn't. I wrote it in the book. Oh. But, I mean, yeah. ignore the book. It was a first draft, a bit like the Bond script. <laughs> there were some mistakes. I mean, yeah. the blowjob scene was a bit copious. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, go tell them that dogs will go to heaven. I've changed yeah, my mind. <laughs> Yeah, maybe like the Bible is just a hack that was put on God by Satan. He's like, "Oh, I didn't want it released yet," and now now he's starting to send it out. Very odd. <laughs> when, the, when the actual, when the, the when the definitive Bible comes out, everyone's gonna feel pretty silly, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I reckon there's gonna be a lot of apologies to be made exactly. all round. <laughs> oh Christ! But um, maybe it'll have something groundbreaking, like Andrew Lloyd Webber is is the second Jesus, and then we can. <laughs> yeah, or well, we've been saying his name the, wrong the entire time. Exactly. That but, would be uh, that would be really awkward. Does that <laughs> nullify all the prayers, or does you know does God kind of? You get the idea. I don't know. He's kind of going let dogs into heaven, so I think he's a pretty chill guy. Excellent. I mean, you know, I mean, got, I mean, dog people can't be bad, really. He's got he's got the famine and the uh, world natural do, disasters. And dogs the... can go to heaven. Can dogs go to hell as well? Are they are they are they just in the the intergalactic? <laughs> Just the system. Well, he said all dogs go to heaven, didn't he? Oh, why yeah. Just dogs? Sure. Why not? Oh, why I guess not they cats? can't. Wow. Why do what cats, dolphins? I don't what a miserable a place sh- hell must be. Not exactly. a single dog. Not even I the mean, evil dogs. And the thing is, of all of all the animals to go to heaven, like I think it should be like fucking cows or pigs or ducks or something. They get the shit kicked out of them. And like, oh, what about turkeys? turkeys <laughs> True, but we know most lives. of the Abrahamic religions really don't like pig. So I mean, I don't <laughs> think pig pigs probably aren't on the. <laughs> I mean, it's well, amazing. Career allowed pig, really, given that no. the you know the, the other two are just completely vermintly anti pig. <laughs> oh Christ! But it was um just 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 very very odd things to say. Yeah, I, completely I, surreal. Yeah. I mean, it just I guess it just at the end of the day, it serves to remind you that as nice and as you know as nice as some of the stuff Pope Francis does, as human as humanist as it is, then fundamentally he is the the antithesis, really, of <laughs> everything or of that of any anything logical. Yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, lo- lovely point to end on. Calling yeah. Francis a madman. <laughs> and this man <laughs> has like an extra couple billion dollars than he thought he did because of some bad tax filing. Fair enough. But, um, but right, anyway, if uh, if you did listen to that, I hope you enjoyed it. I've got yeah. to shoot off. But um, thanks for thanks for listening. Hope that was yes. interesting. Hope you, hope you listen soon. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye.